great stories that define our state's character. Here's Kevin Mackey with this week's Montana Moment, brought to you by Montana Chevy Dealers. After gold was discovered in Alder Gold in 1863, throngs of fortune seekers poured into Virginia City and its surrounding area, coming from all points of the compass. Most of them were men, but in this male-dominated rough-and-tumble town, two pioneer women rose to prominence as successful and respected pillars of their community. The obstacles they overcame is one of amazing resilience. Kevin Mackey has our Montana moment. Virginia City, Montana's territorial capital and wild boomtown of the mid to late 1800s is filled with stories of distinctive citizens. Almost all are about men, but Sarah Bickford's story is especially unique. Sarah Bickford was a uh, African-American woman uh, born a slave in Tennessee in uh, 1852. The Thompson Hickman Library in Virginia City houses records of eight-year-old Sarah Blair living in Tennessee in 1860. And uh, lived there until um, she uh, was emancipated in 1863. Gary Forney says in 1870, Sarah became a nanny and domestic for the John Murphy family. When the family moved to Virginia City, Sarah came with them. She apparently jumped at the opportunity to come west with them, and she did. Uh, they left after the first year, but Sarah stayed on. She took work as a hotel maid, then married and had children with an African-American minor. Uh, after the birth of her first child, uh, started becoming abusive toward her. She was able to obtain a divorce from uh, her first husband. She had three children with him, two of whom, two boys, died of uh, diphtheria in very close sequence. A girl later died at the age of 15. Sarah would stay on in Virginia City. Continued to work here, owned and operated a bakery for a couple of years, and then met her second husband and uh, had uh, four children by that marriage. Her second husband, Stephen Bickford, was white. He owned two-thirds of the Virginia City Water Company. After Stephen Bickford died, Sarah took over the water company. In 1900, she purchased this building, one of the oldest in Virginia City. This is a, a very significant site. The Virginia City Water Company became the operation for Sarah Bickford. The building is now a museum owned and operated by the Virginia City Preservation Alliance. It has a dark history. It was known as the Hangman's Building. The multiple execution took place here, uh, a spot where the vigilantes executed five men that they decided were uh, road agents. They're buried in Virginia City's Boot Hill, but Sarah saw a more positive role for the site. She bought out her husband's partner's shares to own the entirety of the company. Not only was she the first woman to own a public utility in the United States, but of course the first black woman. Virginia City attracted people from all over, people who left their past lives behind and signed on to hard work that might pay off in riches or at least a better future, a new beginning a new life. Sarah was certainly one of those people. She did everything she could to improve the water company and herself. Her son had been working as a maintenance engineer in the company. She picked up, I'm sure, some practical knowledge of the operation from that. Uh, she also enrolled herself in a correspondence school in business management. She immersed herself in every aspect of the company. She improved infrastructure. When they started out, they were using hollowed logs as a means of transporting water from one place to the next. Uh, by the time she left, they had converted most of that to iron pipes. Sarah would run the company for 31 years. She had the money to uh, provide a good education for her daughters in Eastern colleges and uh, to keep a nice home and own a few other properties along the way. She actually inherited mining properties that Stephen, her husband, uh, owned during the time of his life. She helped other people in need, like one of the African-American men who lived in one of these houses in town. Cared for by Sarah Bickford uh, during his last uh, days, so she administered nursing care to him. Gary says she also helped people financially. She was indeed a, a popular figure. The reports of her obituary talk of hundreds of people that attended the 
procession that came from the church. Sarah Bickford, one of Virginia City's most esteemed early citizens. When we come back, the story of Adeline LeRae. Hear the story of another prominent woman who helped shape Virginia City and the impact she had on the town. Coming up after the break. At NBC Montana, you can be a part of our award-winning news and weather team. It's called Chime In. Here's how it works. The next time you see news or weather happening, snap a picture or video and send it our way. Go to the NBC Montana app and open the menu on the top left. Scroll down to Chime In and click Submit Content. Add your pictures and videos by pressing Upload. Add a comment, a location, then select your topic. It can be Montana weather, news, sports, animals, and much more. Enter your name, email address, and agree to the conditions. Chime In connects you directly to our news and weather teams. So stay with NBC Montana to see your pictures and videos on air and online. And I'll be working for you, alerting you to severe weather. Depend on meteorologist Mitchell Coombs. Live weeknights at 5, 6, and 10 p.m. on NBC Montana. In cooling. Montana Gold Camps offered great opportunities, but they also presented tremendous challenges. Kevin Mackin continues our Montana moment with the story of Adeline LeRae. Bill Lev of Sheridan, Montana loves local history. He's researched the lives of Sarah Bickford and another prominent woman in the area of the time, Adeline LeRae. He gave this presentation to the local community this summer. Adeline and her husband, Jean-Baptiste LeRae, owned and operated a mercantile not far from Virginia City in Cicero, which later was renamed LeRae. Bill says records show the paths of Adeline and Sarah would cross. After Sarah Bickford divorced her first husband, a man by the name of John Brown, and got custody of her child, she did go and work for Adeline LeRae in LeRae. Some of the records say it was a brief period, others say it was for several years, so it's not clear. He says there's also another important connection involving a business that Sarah opened. A bakery and boarding business for travelers in Virginia City it's written that Adeline LeRae was the person who financed her business venture for her. Adeline and Jean Baptiste were well off, but for Adeline, it wasn't always that way. She was born in French Canada and decided with her first husband, a widower with three children, to move to Virginia City. They also brought Adeline's late sister's children along. Those three, we'll call them foster children, came with her three stepchildren with her to Virginia City. Her husband, Damien, died en route. So Adeline, a new widow, found herself in Montana with six kids. You might imagine that a rough and remote gold mining camp filled almost exclusively with men would be a challenge for a woman of that time, especially a single woman charged with supporting so many children. Living in Nevada City, Adeline became a washerwoman. Jean-Baptiste, a French-Canadian himself, was excited to meet her. When he found out that there was a French-Canadian woman in Nevada City washing clothes, he got on his horse and cart, rode in, and proposed on the spot. She said yes. From all indications, it was a good match. Bill says Jean-Baptiste was a generous, reputable businessman who provided important services to miners and ranchers. Supplying initially the mining and the mining camps in Virginia City, and then later on supplying the larger area and his purchasing of different ranches, owning toll bridges, they did become quite wealthy. After he died, he says Adeline would share her wealth and started to spend the money helping out ranchers, paying off mortgages, giving money to people. Both Adeline and Jean Baptiste were devout Catholics. Their modest church was just across the street from their house and the mercantile. The building on my right was the original St. Mary's Church in Luray. It was replaced by a new St. Mary's. This church is the legacy of both Adeline and Jean Baptiste Luray. While Jean-Baptiste was alive, he had talked about wanting to build a permanent stone church. He died in 1895. 
Adeline died the year later, and in Adeline's will, she left $8,000 to the Bishop of Montana to build a church on this site. And so she did. Today, St. Mary's continues to serve parishioners from all over the area. It was Adeline's great gift to the community, the women of the gold camps, Adeline and Sarah. I like the story because it has a good ending. It had a good ending for both Sarah Bickford as well as for Adeline LeRae. Two pioneer women who helped build Montana. Kevin Mackey, NBC, Montana. If you want to watch this story again or any of our Montana moments, go to NBCMontana.com slash Montana Moment. These unique stories about the Treasure State, its history, and its great people are now the Montana Moment podcast. Look for new episodes every week. If you have a story idea, let us know. Until next time, be safe, stay healthy, and keep making Montana Moments.